186 people have been exonerated from death row. Convicted, sentenced to death, but they didn't do it. Richard Glossop will be number 187. Let me tell you why. This case was built on the word of the guy who did the actual killing, Justin Sneed. Sneed has told two versions of this story, one to the police and the prosecutors, who could otherwise give him the death penalty, where Richard Glossop hired him to do it, and one to his friends in private, in jail and in prison, where he and his girlfriend planned a robbery for drug money. Only one of those stories fits with the rest of the evidence, the one he told his friends. In 1997, Oklahoma City motel owner Barry Van Treese was found beaten to death in one of the rooms of his motel. The killer was turned in a week later, Justin Sneed, the motel's sometimes maintenance man and itinerant roofer, a guy known around town and to the police to have a serious meth problem. Sneed confessed, but the cops wanted him to spread the blame so he wouldn't, quote, hang by himself. And they even suggested who he should blame, the motel's manager, Richard Glossop. Why? Because when they talked to Glossop, they decided they didn't like him. <laughs> he's, like I said, he's very arrogant and very cocky. He was one of those kind of guys that really irritates you, you know, with his comebacks. And when Sneed did as they suggested, he was given a plea deal. He escaped the death penalty. Are you saying you're the one that did this and you did it by yourself? And I don't believe that. You know, Rich is well, under arrest, don't you? Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's under arrest too. Okay. So he's the one, he's putting it on you the worst. Now, I think that there's more to this than just you being by yourself. And I'd like to. Tell me what, how this got started and what happened. And anything you tell us, we're going to go tell the district attorney. I mean, if it's a situation where you didn't mean to do this, got carried away, and you're sincere and you're telling the truth, we'll go tell the man that. But we want to know who, whose idea it was. If it's at all your idea, the whole thing? No, sir. Well, okay, tell me. You need to tell us about it. Okay. Rich told me that he would uh, split my money, we could get another bearing. The guy he blamed, Glossop, is on death row. How did this happen? Once they got Sneed on tape blaming Glossop, the police simply stopped investigating. Prosecutors took the case to trial, but with no physical evidence that Glossop was involved and no other witnesses who knew anything about him being involved in it. They needed some explanation for why the manager, who was otherwise known to have a good relationship with Van Trees, would have wanted the owner dead. It wouldn't make any sense for it to be a robbery because the manager had control of the cash all the time. He could have walked away with it any time he wanted. They needed something else. They settled on claiming that Glossop must have been embezzling from the motel. And he wanted the owner out of it. They presented the jury with a one-page Excel spreadsheet made by the victim's wife. They claimed showed missing money. They found some witnesses who said Glossop was acting weird after the murder. And they put Sneed, who'd made a deal to save his own life, on the witness stand. That was all the jury heard. Glossop's lawyers didn't investigate the crime, and they didn't call any witnesses in his defense. Not one. The state's case may not have made much sense, but it went entirely unchallenged. Glossop was sent to death row, almost entirely on the word of the admitted killer, Justin Sneed. I, I think the, the specifics about the murder plot came from Mr. Sneed entirely. 
So what really happened to Barry Van Trees? We finally done the investigation that neither the police nor Glossop's lawyers ever did. And it's actually pretty simple. Sneed had a serious meth addiction. Everyone who hung around the motel knew it. He talked a lot when he was in jail before the trial and in prison since then. And he's told a lot of people essentially the same thing. Sneed and his girlfriend learned that Van Treese would be carrying a large amount of cash that night. So they made a plan for the girlfriend to lure Van Treese into a motel room and where Sneed would rob him. But like meth users sometimes do, Sneed got out of control and then ended up beating Van Treese to death when he'd only planned to knock him out and rob him. That fits with the evidence at the scene. It fits with Sneed and his girlfriend taking off after the killing. It fits with the witnesses who thought they'd heard a woman's voice coming from the room around the time of the murder. It fits with the cash found in the trunk of the car that Sneed had known should have been there, but that he never found. The many witnesses we've talked to independently corroborate each other. It all fits. A classic drug-fueled robbery gone wrong. And offered a chance to save his own life. The killer, Sneed, took it. He even told his jailmates that he'd set Glossop up. And he wasn't sorry. Nobody bothered to talk to these witnesses or learn their story until now. Thank God we found them while Rich is still alive. They, they destroyed my life. They took me from my family. They took me from everything that mattered to me in life. If we're going to execute someone, we'd better be damn sure they did it. Based on all this, if we're sure of anything, it's that Richard Glossop had nothing to do with killing Barry Van Trees. We know this country has executed innocent men before. We must stop this execution so it doesn't happen again. Please go to saverichardglossop.com for all the evidence backing up what I've told you today. A man's life depends on it.